Thanks for joining me to talk about entrepreneurship as education. Uh, I know you and I both have a different view on the education system. Um, you know, many people think of education as school. The only kind of education they understand is school, English class, science class, math class. And I believe, and I suspect you believe, that you can learn a lot by entrepreneurship. Um, I'm big on teenage entrepreneurs. So I wonder, do you think we can learn by means of being an entrepreneur? And in which case, how do we learn by means of being an entrepreneur? Uh, being an entrepreneur is partly being very, cre you're very creative and you're engaged in the world and you're, you're, trying, to, you're cr trying to create products or services or solutions to problems or you have, cre and you, you are able to, <clears throat> requires you to be a little bit more empathetic to people and to have to listen to the customers. And entrepreneurship is not a passive activity. So much of education is, is as, as the way it's evolved, it's kind of passive. You're, you're like you're on this assembly line and you, and you, have, and you get filled up by this knowledge passively. Or maybe you, you might read a book or something like that, but it, it may not be something you're particularly interested in. Someone else has decided that you should learn this. <clears throat> and it's not very self-directed, at least at the lower levels when you get, maybe Montessori is, and some of the other uh, uh, more interesting, uh, innovative techniques. But the typical standard schools that I went to were boring. And uh, I was frequently having, forcing, trying to force myself to learn things that I wasn't interested in, didn't see any relevance for me. And uh, yeah, I, could, I wanted to make good grades and please my parents so I could study and, and force myself to do it. But I didn't retain much of it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. and, but when I became an entrepreneur, I was now engaged in the world. I, I, I had never taken any business classes, for example, <clears throat> when I was in, went to college or, or high school, no, no business classes at all. Big mistake that we don't teach business until and much higher, until they get to be a much older. Because I think the basic, most people don't have basic financial skills that uh, they don't understand how to invest, they don't know how to save, they don't know how to, they don't have accounting, they don't, just don't understand money very well. That's unfortunate. But for me, <clears throat> when I became an entrepreneur, I became highly engaged. And since I didn't know anything about business, I began to A, ask a ton of questions to everybody. So I was always very curious, always asking questions. And I was learning partly that way. Secondly, I began to read books that I wanted to read because I, I needed to have this knowledge. And so I, I absorbed information so much better be, uh, and efficiently because I was interested in the topic because it was like one book would lead to another book which would lead to another book and, and I was learning and I was absorbing this information because I really wanted to. And so I was, I was self-directed. It was, I was responsible for it. It, was, it wasn't somebody else telling me what I had to read. I was reading what I wanted to read and what I needed to learn to be effective. Also, uh, entrepreneurs are they're creative. I don't, I don't think people understand how creative most entrepreneurs are. Um, I read an interesting book recently by Adam Grant called Think Again. And he was talking about how entrepreneurs in that book are, they're good ones, are, they are always able to think again, which means they rethink a problem. Because generally, oftentimes, people think they have an answer, and then they just get trapped in that answer. Whereas <clears throat> science, for example, is always teaching us that we don't ever really know anything for sure, because we're always, science is always testing, experimenting, learning, changing, evolving. Well, <clears throat> the entrepreneurial spirit is inherently that same way. We're always trying new things out. We're always testing. The market's telling us it likes this or it doesn't like th that. We have competitors that are innovating, so you have to see them and you have to study them and take the best things that they're doing and integrate it into what you're doing and iterate on it. <clears throat> so entrepreneurship has this also continuous learning, continuous improvement, and you're, you're engaged in it in a more intense level than you ever were at school. So I'm pretty sure, you know, I didn't take any business classes, but I'm pretty sure after one year of starting up a business, just in the number of questions I asked and the, and the books that I read and the, and the experiments that I did in business, I knew, I, I'd, in one year I'd, I'd probably, what I would have learned in 10 years, 
going to school. I mean, it was, it's such an accelerated path for learning. And also, you're under, it's, you're under some financial pressures to perform, right? You have to, I had to learn about you know, how to meet a payroll, how to hire people, how to keep them from quitting, how to pay them fairly, how to discipline people, how to, uh, how to interact with people in a more skillful way. Entrepreneurship, if you're, if you're a good one, it teaches you leadership skills, it teaches you management skills, it teaches you human relations skills. Um, it, it's, and also, I have met the most interesting people by being an entrepreneur. Because I, first of all, I meet interesting people all the time, but I meet very creative people of all different walks in life. And, and I've noticed that the, the most creative people in science or education or actors, artists, musicians, those are the people that I connect up with best, I think, because they're also living this highly involved, highly creative life. Um, it's a very, um, it's a good way to live, quite frankly. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I will always be an entrepreneur until the day I die. Of course, I love all of that, especially love 10 years of uh, school and one year of entrepreneurship. But I've been thinking a lot of people would think, okay, um, once you get done with K-12, and maybe once you get done with your bachelor's degree, then you can be an entrepreneur. So, uh, you know, we have people who are starting their entrepreneurial journey at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. What, what's the kind of balances for a teenager? Would you be concerned if a teenager was too much on the entrepreneur side and not enough on the academic side? How, do, how should a parent or a um, teenager themselves think about this? Well, that's a great question, and there's not one right answer, right? It's, it's, it's individualized. And <clears throat> sure, some people could just, all they, all they cared about was their job at age 12, and, and they would learn a lot about that. But if I was a parent, I'd be concerned that my, my child was also missing out on some other things, too. On the other hand, <clears throat> I will tell you that um, I never got an allowance when I was a kid. I, I really think the way my parents raised me around money was really smart. They never gave me an allowance, but they put a price on everything they wanted me to do. It, mow the lawn, rake the leaves, um, sweep out the porch, um, whatever it might be that they needed chores doing, they'd put a, they'd put a price on it. And if I wanted money, and I did want money, I, I, I started, I was an entrepreneur in a way at age 10. As soon as my parents would let me get out into the yard and do things, I was out there doing it because I wanted that money because it was my money. I earned it and I could spend it however I wanted to spend it. An allowance is kind of like, I don't know, it's almost like socialism. You get free things from the, parent, uh, the parents, from the government, and you have to you know, do all this work, and then they sort it out. I liked it because I was more independent. I liked it being my money, and so I, was, I worked hard. And then as soon as I legally could get jobs, I, I think I, I immediately got jobs. I loved working when I was a teenager, and I learned so much. And when I talked to lots of entrepreneurs, I read biographies about entrepreneurs, I discovered that my path is actually quite common, that most entrepreneurs start working at a very young age. Somebody like Warren Buffett, he had a whole newspaper delivery empire where he was hiring, when he was just a kid, he was already hiring people to deliver the newspapers and he'd get more routes and he knew that he had to, if, to get every paper there on time, you know, not in the mud and, and, and he trained the people that were working for him to do that because that would expand his business. Um, Steve, and, Steve Jobs and uh, Michael Dell and Bill Gates, all these guys were out there hustling, uh, doing, doing stuff when they were very young. I, I think it, when you're, also when you're doing that, you're, you're, you're just more engaged in the world because you're, and you're learning things about people, you're learning things about how the world works, right? I mean, there's this, so much of modern education is, is just theoretical and Entrepreneurship is not theoretical. I mean, there's a theory about it, of course, but when you're actually practicing entrepreneurship and practicing business, you are learning things that you will never learn very effectively in a book or in a classroom. Not to say that books and classrooms aren't very valuable, but this is a different kind of learning and, and one that I, I wish more people did. That's fabulous. I guess I am thinking, you know, some people 
I know that you didn't finish college. Some people may not finish high school. What, how, does, how should a child, you know, what ratio, or how does even one think about it? I know it depends on each individual case, but how, what's the framework for thinking of the balance between academics or when academics are valuable versus entrepreneurship as a path to learning? Um, you know, how does one know when, oh no, you need to stay in school well, even if I really want to work on my business? I mean, it's a really good question. First of all, everybody's not cut out to be an entrepreneur, Michael. It, it does require a certain person mm -hmm. that's going to hustle, mm -hmm. is creative, is willing to make adjustments and adaptions, mm -hmm. and are willing to work hard. Mm -hmm. It's not a shortcut. Being entrepreneurs, you're not going to, you're going to work your ass off. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's not for everybody. So I'm not sure this is, I'm not saying everybody should be an entrepreneur. Um, and we live in a society that's, it's, overrates credentials. I mean, it's, it's a credential society where it's like uh, people get promoted because they have the right credentials. I, I personally, as a, as a CEO of a pretty, uh, well, when I retired from Whole Foods six months ago, of a very large corporation, I uh, paid almost no attention to credentials. I mean, I'd look at them, of course. If you look at somebody's resume, and you, it's a starting place to ask questions, but <clears throat> they can have the greatest credentials in the world. They can be from Harvard or Yale or Princeton. So what? That just means they got credentialed someplace. It doesn't. It doesn't. It means they were good at test taking, perhaps. So entrepreneurship is is uh, it's a good path, and I think personally more people ought to do it um, at a young age, because for one thing they might just fall in love with it, and they may and that may be their path. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't fall in love with it and they go a different way, uh, they're still going to learn valuable skills about how to connect with people. You, I mean. There's so many different ways that you learn. You learn about people, you learn about business, you learn about, you learn about your society. Mm -hmm. I remember as I began to dive deeper into business, I began to realize, you know, gosh, this is kind of how the world works. I mean, people are trading with each other. It's voluntary, nobody has to trade. It's, it's this win, win, win game where you're, you're trying to, you, you've got to satisfy customers and to do that, if you have people working for you, they have to be pretty happy because they're the ones that will satisfy the customers. You, you need to be, get able to get return on your capital that people entrust to you. You won't get any more capital. Mm -hmm. And if you do give a good return, people will invest more in you in the future. You have suppliers you have to work with and you're partnering with them. So you're, it's this constant dance of relationships and exchanging and, and learning and gaining. You know what it is? It's really fun. Mm -hmm. and, and I think particularly younger people, so much of school is not very much fun. Mm -hmm. I mean. I remember the two classes I liked best, the three classes I liked best in school, PE, music, and art. I wasn't very good, I was pretty good in, in sports. I wasn't very good in art. I usually get C's in art, which is unfortunate because I stopped taking art classes because I wasn't very good at it. But I really liked it. And why did I like music too? I mean, these were creative things. They were, I weren't just passive learning. I was engaged. I was singing or playing, and, and I was creating an art and, and using my hands. And there was, you know, that was a part of school you just didn't get in all the rest of the classes. Entrepreneurship is in that same genre of doing and being creative, and that's fun. It's a kind of play. Kids learn a lot more when they're playing than when they're when they're working. I think I think play is underrated. Totally, totally agree. Um, what, with re respect to your own education, what percentage of it would you say was unnecessary? If you had had the freedom to do whatever you wanted to do, say from 13 to 18, what percentage of it w would you voluntarily have gone to classes for, and what percentage of it would you have? <laughs> well, well, 13 dumped? to 18 is is odd because. I, I would almost say I had no interest whatsoever in school. I played basketball. I was very, I was interested in basketball, my friends, and girls. Mm -hmm. That was what I was interested in. The rest of it, I just, I would be so bored in my classes. I was, you know, I made good grades. I was a smart kid, mm -hmm. and I didn't have to work very hard to make pretty good grades. But I just, to me, it was always, I just wanted to get through to basketball practice mm -hmm. and, or to lunch. So it was, those were sort of lost years for me. Mm -hmm. And, and it was so great when I got into the university, though, because here, these, then ideas were taken very seriously there. And I started, and I, I was, I, and I could, I, I began to self-direct my education at that point. In fact, you know, I didn't graduate from college, but I have over 120 hours of electives. Mm -hmm. I just started taking classes I was inter interested in. I just read books I wanted to read. 
I audited classes. I, I didn't even, because I, I was interested in the subject matter. And that was very liberating to show up in a class. Was, I knew I wasn't going to take a test or get graded, but I was going to learn, listen to the lectures. I mean, I still, um, I still get stuff from the teaching company and listen to lectures that professors are doing in various topics. And if I'm not interested in it, then I stop doing it. But if I'm interested in it, I go deeper into it. So uh, a lot of those years were wasted years, honestly. I, I still had a lot of friends and got to play basketball, and uh, it wasn't like it was torture. I was, I was, you know, I was well, I was eating well. I mean, it's not like some conditions in the world. But was it the best use of those years? You know, I probably learned more of my jobs than I did in school in a lot of ways. Something I believe, and we'll see how far you want to go with this, is that a significant portion of adolescent dysfunction in the United States today is due to the passivity of schooling as opposed to doing things. Does that seem plausible to you? Absolutely, because I can't emphasize this enough. Self-esteem, largely, part of it is something that your parents, if you feel loved by your parents, so that's, I don't want to underestimate the importance of that. Mm -hmm. But I would say secondarily, it's the competencies that we develop. Mm -hmm. Every time I learn a new skill, I feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. I feel you know more, connected to the world, more engaged. And the thing I see increasingly with young people is they, they're, they're in this awkward age where they're not children anymore and they just can't play. They're not adults because they can't do anything with any skill. They couldn't support themselves. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happens when you're an entrepreneur is you're out there earning money and you realize, you know what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I, can, so I could support myself if I needed to. Mm -hmm. I could get an apartment. Mm -hmm. and, I could, and, and, and that's important for young people to begin to feel that this is a confusing world. Mm -hmm. How do I engage in it? How do mm -hmm. I connect to it? How do I prevent myself from being overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. And entrepreneurship puts you on the, um, you're, you're active, you're mm -hmm. engaged, you're learning, and you're developing skills, and you are feeling better about yourself mm -hmm. because your self-esteem is going up because as you gain competencies, other people respect you and you respect yourself more. Um, I'm going to let you go on your hike. So wonderful to see you, John. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Have fun. Thanks. <laughs>